Good evening and thank you for being with us tonight for the uh, Tuesday, February 10th, 2015 meeting of the Berkeley County Board of Education. I call the meeting to order. I declare that a quorum is present and that the media has been notified. Do I have a motion and a second for the approval of tonight's agenda? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Second. Is that Mr. McQuillan or Ms. Dovey? Mr. McQuillan, so we've got a, a motion by Ms. Lee. We've got a second by Mr. McQuillan. All those in favor of approving tonight's agenda, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries seven to zero. If you would please join us now for tonight's opening prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now we'll move to agenda item number four, approval of minutes. We've got two sets of minutes tonight to approve. Uh, hearing no objection, I will accept a motion to approve both minutes. Uh, so do I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the curriculum workshop of January 27th, 2015 and the regular meeting of January 27th, 2015? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Walford. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. McQuillan. All right. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes of the curriculum workshop of January 27th, as well as the regular meeting of January 27th, as moved by Ms. Walford, seconded by Mr. McQuillan, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Both sets of minutes are passed with a 7-0 vote. Now we'll move to uh, Ms. Amy Murray, agenda item number five, Legacy Builders. We're very happy for Ms. Murray to uh, recognize some of our local folks tonight. We'll be hearing about special recognition for Spa War, in particular, Carl, Mr. Carl Calvert, as well as Jennifer Thielman, our State Elementary School Assistant Principal of the Year. Ms. Murray, as always, wonderful last name. The podium is yours. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, Dr. Thompson, members of the board, and all of you who have joined us. Uh, tonight we have two outstanding people to recognize. Our first honoree is being recognized for the exemplary service he and his students provide to one of the district's most supportive partners. SPAWAR works with local school districts and institutions of higher education to implement programs and activities for students and teachers that enrich their understanding of science, technology, engineering, and math, so the STEM subjects. Uh, their STEM outreach vision is to inspire, engage, educate, and employ a world-class STEM talent pool with the creativity and agility to meet our, na our national excuse me, defense needs. SPAWAR employs a cadre of dedicated, motivated, and caring volunteers who are excited to share their knowledge and experience with the next generation of scientists and engineers. In demonstration of their appreciation for the countless number of hours their volunteers give to students in the community, each year the command hosts a volunteer appreciation breakfast, breakfast or luncheon. For the last two years, Mr. Carl Calvert, uh, and his culinary arts team at Stratford High School have prepared uh, and served the meals to Spay War volunteers. Mr. Calvert has also assisted the STEM outreach team by preparing snacks for student events hosted by Spay War. Spay War's outreach team believes they have fostered a relationship with Mr. Calvert and his team that is second to none. Their employees have provided a service to the students of Berkeley County in their area of expertise. And in turn, Mr. Calvert and his team have served SPAWAR volunteers in their area of expertise. This is a phenomenal relationship established between the two groups and demonstrates a true sense of community. 
At this time, I'd like to invite Captain Amy D. Buren, Commanding Officer with Space and Naval Warfare Systems Center, to the podium to say a few words about Mr. Calvert and present him with a gift. So, uh, good evening. It's uh, my pleasure to present an award to Mr. Carl Calvert, if he could come up. So I wasn't uh, actually going to read the, the letter, but because um, I don't have my glasses on, but I probably have it memorized, so let me give it a shot. Uh, Dear Mr. Calvert, Space and Naval Warfare System Center, Space War Sysen, Atlantic, with support from the National Defense Education Program and the efforts of Naval <coughs> Research ONR, works with local school districts and institutions of higher education to implement programs and activities for students and teachers that enrich their understanding of science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM. Space War Sysen, Atlantic's STEM outreach vision is to inspire, engage, educate, and employ a world-class STEM talent goal with the creativity and agility to meet our national defense needs. Need longer arms. <coughs> uh, we employ a cadre of dedicated, motivated, and caring volunteers who are excited to share their knowledge and expertise with the next generation of scientists and engineers. In demonstration of our, our appreciation for the, for the countless number of hours and volunteers our volunteers give to students in the community, each year the command hosts a volunteer appreciation breakfast. For the past two years, you and your culinary arts team have prepared and served the meals to our volunteers. You have also assisted the STEM outreach team by preparing snacks for students and events hosted at Spayworth Sisson Atlantic. The Space Force Sun Atlantic team, excuse me, outreach team, believes they have fostered a relationship with you and your team that is second to none. Our employees have provided a service to the students of the Berkeley County School District in our area of expertise, and in turn, you and your team served our volunteers in your area of expertise. This is a phenomenal relationship established between our two groups and demonstrates a true sense of community. Therefore, it is with great pleasure that we recognize you and your culinary arts team with the Lex Legacy Legend Award for your spirit of service to our, to our command and the STEM Outreach Program, and for establishing a, a relationship we hope will continue for years to come. <laughs> that I will read. <clears throat> Space War System Center, Atlantic STEM Outreach Team. Maybe the light will be better. Uh, which is to express our sincere appreciation to Mr. Carl Cavert and the Stratford, Stratford High School Culinary Arts Program for the services you have rendered and the relationship we have developed. <laughs> So, um, in just in plain language, I really want to thank Mr. Calvert for um, supporting our team. We have a lot of volunteers uh, at Spay War. Uh, they're very interested in the community, very interested in helping out the next generation, um, and even having those students maybe attend local colleges uh, and come back to work for Spay War in the cyber arena, information assurance, uh, networking uh, areas. It's a huge new um, air field of study, lots of cyber, you hear cyber this and cyber that. So there's, there's a cyber security that we're concerned about, you know, robust networks, um, just a variety of things. We have, what, 2,500 folks here in the Charleston area, and we have um, several commands, in the one in the Hampton Roads area, one in New Orleans, um, a couple overseas, and one in the National Capital Region. What we do, in our opinion, for the Department of Defense and the Department of the Navy specifically is keep our network safe, keep our correspondence and our communications um, from 
being overheard, if you will, uh, by other nations. So what we do is important, and I think what we do for the community is just as important. Um, I don't think we could have found a more robust and dedicated team of individuals. So we want to thank Carl for um, his part in helping um, that team come together, share a meal, um, and really realize what they're doing for the community. It's very important to them, and I think it's very important to the community. Another thing that we do is, uh, this is a very special um, celebration within the, the community, in the military community. Um, commanding officers are, get, are uh, have a command coin, symbolic of what it is that their command does. So I wanted to provide that to you, give that to you. Um, so, like I said, it's a special honor to get something like that. So, no to our alike. And um, <laughs> from, from me to you, and on behalf of the command, um, we hope that you'll stay with us for many, many years to come. And um, it's great it's great to know that you're helping the community as much as, as we are, and we just really enjoy doing it. So we'll continue to do that for as long as we possibly can. So thank thanks very much. You know, the county and, and the local people have been super for Stratford. Uh, the Culinary Arts Program is, is just uh, doing what we can do to help people out. And it's nice that these students realize that you know, there's a benefit to, uh, to volunteering and doing things. Uh, we're doing stuff next week at the um, Little Country Food Bank and doing things in other people's counties as well, which is kind of nice because uh, you don't see the young people doing what they need to do. And, you know, I'll bring this to them. I have two of the girls that did the last function with us. So uh, nice to see this, and they were excited that I'm here tonight. They're in soccer, so they can't be. Thank you very much, and I appreciate everybody's uh, support for my program. And we do good things. Congratulations again to Mr. Calvert. Uh, now, back in December, we announced that our own Jennifer Thielman. Uh, assistant Principal at Sangri Intermediate was named the 2014-2015 South Carolina Elementary Assistant Principal of the Year. Tonight, she is here with us uh, to be formally recognized for her tireless efforts to change the lives of students and families in the Sangri community for the better. Now, a few things about her. A testament to her creativity and innovation, in 2013, she created an outstanding program called the Sangri Intermediate Dogs, or Dads of Great Students Program which is for father figures of students. The kickoff pizza party drew 300 fathers and students. During that year, 2013, 30 fathers volunteered to be watchdogs. They assisted students with reading, monitored hallways, and encouraged good behavior throughout the day. The program gained such a large following that the 2014 watchdogs kickoff had to be divided into two nights, with each night drawing 150 people. That's a lot of people. Uh, to date, the program has more than 50 fathers who regularly volunteer. Um, she is a member of the South Carolina Association of School Administrators, as well as the Berkeley County Association of School Administrators. She served as a team captain for the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life, and she also participates in Trident United Way's Day of Caring uh, as a team captain. She's a child care worker and on uh, the new member committee at Journey Church. In terms of her passion for education and children, when asked what legacy she'd like to leave at Sangri Intermediate, she said, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a small community where, as the song says, everybody knows your name. This is the legacy I desire to leave at Sangri Intermediate. I want every student to remember that I knew him or her individually and was willing to do everything in my power to make him or her successful. 
Uh, she also said that when she looks back in 10 years and reflects on her tenure at Sangaree Intermediate, she wants those with whom she worked to tell her that she helped them see how important it is to show kids you care on a daily basis. She said, I want them to tell me that I led by example. And you are definitely leading by example. So now, would you please come forward to receive the certificate from Dr. Murray, uh, Dr. Thompson, and the board and say a few words. Ms. Thielman. <laughs> They didn't tell me I was going to say a few words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that's, that's okay. That's okay. I just want to say what an honor and privilege this award is and how lucky I am to get to work in Berkeley County. I've been here for 11 years now. I um, uh, thank everyone here, um, especially um, Angel Siegling, who has been my principal all these years, uh, for giving me the leadership opportunities that I have been given. I look forward to continuing to grow here. And I truly can say I love coming to work on a daily basis. I love the children that I work with, and I love the staff members. So thank you so much. Once again, uh, congratulations to our folks who received special recognition this evening. Ms. Thielman, that is quite a big deal. Uh, for those of you in this room who may not understand how big a deal that is, ask your friends who are educators, they'll explain it to you. And it's becoming a pattern in Berkeley County, which is even more exciting. So way to go, guys. Uh, to Mr. Carl Calvert, let me make eye contact with you. Where are you, sir? May I be the first to tell you how much I've enjoyed your food since <laughs> 2008. I look forward every year to School Board Appreciation Month because your children are going to be back there smiling, saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, sir. This explaining the food and how they made it, it's an absolute joy to not only eat the food that your students make, but to also meet them. So on behalf of this, and I see some of the employees of the district nodding their head as well. <laughs> So I think it's a pretty widely held opinion. Way to go, Mr. Calvert. Way to go, Ms. Thielman. Thank you so much. We're happy to share in your special recognition. At this time, it is customary for any guests, uh, if you would like to exit, uh, this is a good time to do so. We'll, we'll begin our agenda in earnest. So I will allow you the opportunity, if you'd like to uh, leave at this time, to please do so. We'll continue uh, with the meeting. Once again, congratulations, Mr. Calvert and Ms. Thielman. Up next, we have citizen comments, agenda item number six. Prior to uh, hearing our comments this evening, I want to read the citizen comment procedures. Our first speaker will be Miss Linda Riney. Miss Riney, if you would want, go ahead and approach the podium, I'll begin reading the citizen comment procedures, and then you will be allowed to be the first one to speak. In order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that you honor the following guidelines. Stakeholder comments are welcomed and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action on public comments at this meeting. Any person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must be regarding programs, policies, or procedures. Comments regarding complaints against employees other than district level executives or references to students other than the child of the speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should select one speaker. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. And finally, the board chair reserves the right to allot additional time or halt public comments that do not adhere to the guidelines. Ms. Riney, welcome. Ms. Riney is from Cross, South Carolina, and she would like to discuss legal fees. The podium is yours, Ms. Riney. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, I just wanted to take a minute. One thing has been uh, bothering me and really concerning me, and I'm wondering if uh, if the members of the board have really uh, seriously uh, considered uh, the the issue that I want to address, and that is the payment uh, with taxpayer funds paying for legal fees. Uh, for employees uh, that have been uh, indicted on on charges, um, according to, uh, I, I've looked at the uh, evidence uh, in this uh, particular case of an employee that is under indictment right now, and you don't really have to be a lawyer uh, to appreciate the gravity uh, of these charges being as uh, the evidence that uh, is present is not hearsay, it's evidence that came from emails written by the accused. So they, they would carry a great deal of weight. And the board has used as their justification for paying these legal <coughs> fees that the accused person was acting in good faith. When you read these emails and you read the charges, uh, that explanation just astounds me. And when you take into consideration that in the local newspaper articles, statements made by the attorneys involved saying that uh, the accused is innocent because uh, this person, the accused, was simply following the directions of the board. Well, what I'm wondering all of the members who voted to pay these legal fees, should there be a conviction in this particular case with the board on record as saying good faith was exercised when, when these actions were, were performed and the attorneys are saying the accused was operating under the directions from the board, are, are you really have you thought seriously about what the ramifications of that could be? To me, I can see the Attorney General turning things back over uh, to another grand jury for a systemic conspiracy. And I'm just wondering if everybody has taken that into consideration seriously, because this situation has really gone on long enough. It needs to be solved. It needs to be cleaned up. And this just seems to be e extending it on and on and on. So I would ask all the members who are supporting this action to please give it serious thought as to whether this should continue and whether taxpayer money should be spent after the Attorney General has said that those actions are completely illegal. And I would ask you please to consider this seriously. Right, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Ronnie. We appreciate you being with us this evening. Next up is Ms. Nancy Corbin. Ms. Corbin is from Ridgeville, South Carolina, and she would like to discuss the topic of legal fees. Ms. Corbin, the podium is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I too would like to address the uh, concerns of many citizens about taxpayer dollars being used for uh, the civil and criminal fees, um, especially since your rationale is a good faith action on, on um, the part of the individual. Um, the school district sent out a do's and don'ts letter dealing with the referendum that says don't. <clears throat> the school district, its board, members, and employees may not engage in any activity on official time or use county resources that promote or oppose a certain vote. Prohibited actions on county time include promoting the support for or opposition to the ballot measure, collecting funds to support a vote yes or no campaign, printing, copying, emailing, or mailing any material advocating a particular vote, i.e. vote yes November 6th, sending email or making phone calls which either support or oppose the ballot measure on county time, wearing t-shirts or buttons that advocate a yes or no vote while on the clock, organizing vote yes or vote no rallies, be careful, pitfalls, using school district computers, emails, phones to organize support for the referendum. Remember, the communication using official device 
can be subject to Freedom of Information Act, which I think yielded thousands of documents. Um, and I'll read from a few. I have given, I haven't even gotten to the IGP, Individual Graduation Plan, working on referendum stuff for Rodney that he needs ASAP. I'm about 97% complete. If I could just get a dedicated amount, about four hours to work on it without interruption, I could nail it down. We are so close and I just need a half a day without referendum work to focus on it. I'm also working on endorsements from St. Stephen's and Bono mayors. Could I ask that we replace the Berkeley County logo with the Yes for Schools logo on the website for the campaign issue. Yes for Schools weekly campaign meeting, call in number, participant code number. These meetings will repeat every Thursday at 4 p.m. Team, stand up and cheer for your favorite team this Friday and support the school improvement referendum. And it goes on. Good mo um, this was to the individual. I was wondering if there are going to be any signs we could pick up to put in our yards that say vote yes for a bond referendum. Good morning, yes. Yard signs will be available from a school office. They will, ha they will all have them beginning October 15th. Please pick one up and a few more to share with your neighbors and friends. Ms. Corbin, that's your time. If you would uh, wrap up yeah. your point. I think that's enough. But right, if anybody would like more, I have them. Ms. Corbin, thank you so much for being with us this evening and sharing your comments with us. Up next is Mr. Terry Hardesty. Mr. Hardesty will be our final citizen's comment for the evening, and he would like to discuss the topic of South Carolina ethics laws. And this is Mr. Hardesty of Monk's Corner. It's already been covered, so I'm going to decline it. Thank you, Mr. Hardesty. Thank you for being with us. Okay, let's move on to agenda item number seven. Mr. Brantley Thomas. You have an item for action this evening. It's a bond resolution for the refunding of the Series 2006 Securing Assets for Education, also known as SAFE Bonds. Mr. Thomas, the podium is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Thompson. I don't have a slide. I'm just going to talk through it. <laughs> um, earlier today, the uh, Securing Assets for Education uh, board, uh, which is different from y'all, it's a nonprofit, met earlier to approve their resolution of the same item. Uh, as we did for the 03 bonds uh, 2013, we refunded those to include the uh, defeasance of the debt service reserve fund and to take advantage of uh, lower interest rates. We want to do the same thing with the 2006 uh, bonds and uh, we are looking at some significant savings uh, for interest and doing away with uh, the debt service reserve fund which is actual principal of the bonds. So a combination of those are pretty significant. Um, we're watching the market every day, so that number changes every day, so um, I'll not throw a number out, um, but, it, but it is a, it's a good number. Um, you have before you a um, resolution to uh, refund those bonds of not to exceed $91 million, I believe, and I ask for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Uh, we have heard the recommendation of the administration regarding agenda item number seven, item for action. Do we have a motion and a second regarding the administration's recommendation? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the series 2006 safe refunding bond resolution of not to exceed $91 million presented by Mr. Thomas in finance agenda item number seven. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Do I have a second to Mr. Hayes' motion? Thank you, Ms. Schwabe. A motion has been made by Mr. Hayes, seconded by Ms. Schwabe. I will repeat the motion for the record. Uh, it has, a motion has been made to approve the series 2006 safe refunding bond resolution of not to exceed $91 million presented by Mr. Thomas in finance agenda item 7. Do we have any discussion regarding the motion? Good question. Mr. Obi, you have the floor. Do we have an estimate on how much this would be saving us refinancing those bonds? Well, um, early, early accounts uh, show up to net present value of $16 million, um, but that's um, the defeasance of all the debt service reserve funds, so it's, it's going to be a combination. It'll, it'll be a range, I think, between 10 and that. So. so, and then with that, are we extending the life of those bonds, or nope. are we just refinancing for the same, same period, period, just same lower period. interest rate? Right. We're looking at a 
uh, interest rate of around 3% right now. Okay. And it's now about a little over five. Gotcha. Mr. Obey, I, I want to thank you for asking that question because I love hearing Mr. Thomas talk like that. Could you tell us again how much this refunding is going to save us? I'm not going to tell you again because y'all going to stick me into the <laughs> no, number okay. well, between 10 and 16. Well, I, I, again, I, Mr. Obey, that's a great question to ask. And Mr. Thomas, we've said it before. We'll say it again. Thank you so much for choosing to work in Berkeley County. Thank you. you. You give us, our taxpayers, so much back in refunding and refinancing of our bonds. And uh, we deal. certainly are appreciative of it's your efforts. Deal. Do we have any other questions or comments? Nope. Hearing none, we'll call the question. A motion was made by Mr. Hayes, seconded by Ms. Schwabe, to accept the administration's recommendation for agenda item number seven. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Madam Secretary, can you please note that I recuse myself from that vote because my law firm is involved um, in the refunding? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. McQuillan. Madam Secretary, will you, so the vote would be recorded as 600 or 601. We'll put our heads together on that. I don't know, if extension or recusal. 601? All right, we can discuss it later as well. Thank you, Mr. McQuillan. Duly number. noted. It's a hard All right, number. <laughs> Mr. Thomas, your motion carries. Thank you. I'll be uh, getting with you probably between uh, March, end of March, uh, middle of April to start seeing. Hey, I'll sign those documents. Huh? Absolutely. Thank you. Agenda item number eight, administration and facilities. Dr. McLaren will be bringing an item for action to us this evening, the second reading of the Next Gen Elementary School attendance lines. That will be followed by an item for information from Ms. Connie Myers, the quarterly construction report. Dr. McLaren. Good evening, Dr. Good. Thompson, Chairman Murray, members of the board. It is the recommendation of the administration to adopt the proposed attendance lines for Cane Bay Elementary School, College Park Elementary School, Sangaree Elementary School, Sangaree Intermediate School, and Nexton Elementary School as shown. The recommended changes will go into effect in August for the 2015-2016 school year. Thank you, Dr. McLaren. We've heard the administration's recommendation regarding the second reading of the next in elementary attendance lines. Do I have a motion and a second regarding this recommendation? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we accept the administration's recommendation to adopt the proposed attendance lines for Cane Bay Elementary School, College Park Elementary School, Sangaree Elementary School, Sangaree Intermediate School, and Nexton Elementary School as presented. The recommended changes will go into effect in August for 2015-16 school year. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Mr. Hayes, we'll yield to you. I believe I heard you first. Uh, we've made a, uh, received a motion from Ms. Lee. That motion has been seconded by Mr. Hayes to accept the administration's recommendation. The motion will read as follows, or does read as follows, that we accept the administration's recommendation to adopt the proposed attendance lines for Cane Bay Elementary School, College Park Elementary School, Sangaree Elementary School, Sangaree Intermediate School, and Nexton Elementary School as presented. The recommended changes will go into effect in August for the 2015-2016 school year. And board, I would, you rem would remind you that this is the second reading uh, of this action item. Do we have any discussion regarding the motion? Hearing none, let's call the question. All those in favor of the motion to accept the administration's recommendation for agenda item number eight, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Dr. McLaren, the motion carries unanimously. The vote will be recorded as seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Connie Myers, you're up next with the quarterly construction report. Good evening, Ms. Myers. Good evening. Let me get it booted up for you. All right. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Thompson, and members of the board. Tonight, we'd like to give you the quarterly update on the status of the nine major school improvement projects. We've organized this presentation into three areas, the first being a discussion on the overall project schedule, 
Then we'll talk about the individual projects under construction, and finally talk about the individual projects under design. We have updated this overall schedule every quarter so you can see the progress being made for the entire program on one slide. The green line show the construction phase, the blue line shows the design phase, the red line bidding, the orange line is wetland permitting, and purple is the other due diligence efforts. At this time we have four projects under construction, two in the bidding phase and three in the design phase. The order of the projects listed is the order in which they're scheduled to be completed. Stratford started construction in March 2014 and is due to complete in the spring. Nexton started construction in December 2013 and is due to be completed by the end of May. Cross High School Phase 2 started construction in October of 2014 and is due to complete by the end of the summer. For the Merrington project, bids were opened and we hope to be able to bring the GMP to you at the next school board meeting for approval. The scheduled completion date for the Merrington edition is January of 2016. Goose Creek High School started construction in June 2014, June 2014 and is due to complete in August of 2016. Please note for this update we have added some more scheduling items for Goose Creek High School. As you can see, we have a line for the cafeteria which is shown to be completed this summer. The next line is the front building that faces Red Bank Road and that's to be completed in September. And the side building which faces Garwood will be completed next Christmas. The last line item from Goose Creek High shows the demolition of the old buildings so that the new bu bus loop can be constructed. This work is to begin in January of 2016 and will be completed by the summer of 2016. Phillips Simmons Elementary School Middle School started early site work the end of November and the bids were opened for the building on January 27th. The three projects under design include Phillips Simmons High School, Tanner Foster Creek, and Fox Bank Elementary School. This last quarter, November, December, January, we still experienced a lot of rain and so the overall progress has, not has been a bit slower than we've expected. The contractors had planned to work over the Christmas holidays to pick up the time they lost from the rains in the previous month, but as you all know, we only had two good days over Christmas holidays and one was Christmas Day and one was New Year's Day. <laughs> so it didn't work out too well. Um, Stratford High School, Goose Creek High School, and the early site work at Phillips Simmons all have experienced some delays with the weather, but at this time we optimistically hope we can overcome these delays and not slip the completion date. The project with the most problems, well, I'll just say impacts to the schedule will be Stratford High School, and um, we're planning on doing some changes to the CTE lab, so the principal is planning on moving the students in in the next school year so she does not think will affect the students this year so we think we'll be fine there. One other item I need to brief you about is the wetland permit for the Philip Simmons Elementary School, Middle School and High School. The application for the wetland permit was submitted last April of 2014. The permit application also includes the developers projects which are bringing the roads and the utilities to the new schools. The wetland consultant, the developer, and the design professionals all expect us to receive the permit no later than April. We're doing what we can to keep pushing the approval of this permit and optimistically hope to report to you in the next month that we have received it. This first um, slide is for Stratford High School. Um, it was one of the first projects to start construction last year. This project is one of the most complicated projects because it's completed on a very tight site while school is in session. I'm pleased to report that we have not had any student incidents with any construction operations for over the last 10 months. This slide gives you a list of some important items being worked on. Steel erection is almost complete. The exterior is being prepared for the brick. The overhead utilities on the first floor are being roughed in. The drying of the building is now necessary in order that some of the finish work can start. Sometimes it's difficult to see the progress from month to month, and so the project man manager has taken the aerial photograph that the contractors are required to provide each month and has put it together in a little movie. So let me see if I can get it to run for you. 
This is month by month. As you can see at the beginning of the project, you're putting utility lines in, so you see a lot of ground scratching, but not much concrete yet. We are also doing a lot of work in the cafeteria over the summer, which is not really shown. But you can see in September, the footings are going in pretty quickly. We actually got floor slabs being prepared. The steel's starting to go up, the walls are starting to go up, and we really have a look of a building now. We actually have a concrete roof on the addition. Let's see. You guys change this around. <laughs> There we go. Moving on to Nexton. For Nexton Elementary School, we have completed the first inspection milestone this last month. On January 28th, the code official came to the site and conducted the overhead inspection. The code official from the Office, office of School Facilities, or OSF as we call her, looked at the utilities and ceiling grid to ensure they have been installed and supported correctly before they're covered up by the ceiling tile. Additionally, they look at the fire rated walls to ensure the penetrations were sealed properly and the walls were stenciled as fire rated walls. The overhead inspection was a success, so now ceilings can go in and that allows permanent power to be connected and HVAC systems started up. These vital systems will need to be in operation as we get into the finished work. This slide also sho shows the building divided in different sections where A, B, and C are the classroom wings, D is the administration and the media center, E is the cafeteria multipurpose room, art and music classrooms. For each area, key points are listed so you can see what work is occurring in that area. This project remains within budget and is tracking towards the May 31st final inspection. Goose Creek High School. There's a lot happened at Goose Creek High School, right, Mr. Husky? Yeah. <laughs> this is the most difficult project we have because we're constructing enormous two-story buildings on two sides of an occupied high school. There is very little lay down and parking areas available on this very busy campus. The first building section to be completed this summer is the new cafeteria and it's labeled C on this slide. The front building, labeled A, is on schedule to complete around Labor Day, and that will contain many of the fine arts classrooms. Well, the side building, which is labeled B here, should be completed around Christmas time. Once we have all the classrooms moved from the existing buildings into the new buildings, we will start demolishing the old buildings in order to put in the new bus loop. This next slide, shows some of the work that's going on. Um, on the second floor slab of building A, they have finishers up there working it. The roofing's being installed at building B, and the masonry and interior duct work is going in on building C, which are the bottom two slides. Right now the project is tracking along very well, and it's within budget and schedule at this time. At Cross High School, the work in progress is at the new media center. On this slide, you can see interior construction pictures on the left and the rendering on the right. Comparing the two pictures allows you to see how far the construction work has come. Additionally, the bottom right-hand corner shows the steel going up in the new media center entrance. The final OSF inspection is scheduled for February 27th, and once the inspection passes, then we can move the media center from its current space into this new space. Once the move is complete, we then can begin work at expanding their auditorium into the old media center. This project's on schedule and budget with a completion date for this summer. Philip Simmons Elementary Middle School. In November, you approved the early site work for this project and it has started. Um, the silt fencing and tree protection have been installed and the site cleared as you can see in the area photograph. The contractor is doing some grading and filling in areas which do not have wetlands. The bids for the building portion of the project were open on January 27th and the team is looking at value engineering opportunities so that the guaranteed maximum price, GMP, can be prepared. 
The numbers are looking good compared to the budget and we plan to present the GMP for your approval on March 10th school board meeting. As I mentioned before, we really need the wetland permit in hand to start the building construction. Marrington Middle School, this project will add a new auditorium and renovate some classrooms at Marrington Middle School. The final design has been submitted to OSF and we're waiting on their approval. Meanwhile, the project was bid on February 5th and those bids are being reviewed and rolled up together in order to generate the GMP. We are hoping to be able to present the GMP to you at the next school board meeting at the end of this month. The City of Goose Creek is requiring us to go in front of their architectural review board on February 16th and we expect that that ticket to get punched at that meeting. If all goes well, we should be breaking the ground at Marrington Middle School in March and the scheduled completion date for this project is January of 2016. The high school. The new high school is still being designed and the Deakdale design phase completed yesterday and we received new drawings. Um, Jean said that there's three huge volumes that one person can't carry, <laughs> but we have them. This is the phase in which the OSF takes a hard look at the drawings and ensures that the life safety items have been addressed. This phase includes many more details so that the contractor can complete a detailed estimate and we can see where we are with the budget. It also is a time we have the maintenance staff reviewing the drawings in detail to ensure the design has taken into account all the maintenance ease. Um, the renderings on this slide give you an indication what the main entrance in the bus loop will look like when completed. There's also a photograph of the 3D model. The projected date for bidding this project is July, August of 2015, and we should have the wetland permit in by that time, so construction should start right afterwards. The completion date for this new high school is scheduled for August 20 of 2017. Tanner Foster Creek Elementary School. For the Tanner Foster Creek Area Elementary School, the private owner's land contract has some concerns but we expect to work through them. The land contract for the city of Hanningham property, property has been drafted similar, similar to the contracts that we've done for the Nexton and Philip Simmons Middle School properties, and a copy of this contract has been posted on our website. We have conducted both an educator review of the concept design on January 12th and a public review on January 28th. OSF SODS CDOT, the Department of Transportation, visited the site on February 3rd, and we have posted their comments on our website also. Although the preliminary design, as shown here, has a connection to the Henry Brown Boulevard, SCDOT has indicated they will not approve any connections to Henry Brown Boulevard because that road is a controlled access road. SCDOT also reviewed the preliminary traffic study and asked that some additional information be provided about the Foster Creek Williams Lane intersection. The traffic engineer is currently updating the traffic study to provide the information requested. Since we have not been able to complete the contract actions on the land yet, we do not believe we'll be able to complete the school by uh, August 2016. And so we're requesting that the completion date be extended to August of 2017. <coughs> the final project in the program is the new Fox Bank Elementary School. We've completed coordination with the town of Monks Corner on the location, roads, and utilities for the fire station, which shares the site. The town has indicated that they plan to start construction of the fire station in the April-May time frame. The concept plan is shown on the slide. There are a few due diligence items to complete on this property. We have hired a traffic engineer to start the traffic study. Then the developer is working on timbering the site as well as updating the expiring wetland permit. Once the due diligence items are complete, we should be able to close on the property and start the concept design phase. The scheduled completion date for this school is August of 2018. Any questions? 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Myers. I, I want to again compliment you. Your, your presentations are easy to follow, and it, and it makes it, for folks like me who do not have a great deal of knowledge of construction, they're, they're easy to follow. So thank you. Thank you. I'd for like to give some attaboys to my staff, too, because they update that and help me with that. It's well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, If you would, if you'd like yeah. to stand, we'd love to recognize you. You're doing an outstanding job. Yeah. There you go. Oh, don't be so, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do we have any questions? Also, oh, go ahead, Doc. Do we have any architects or contractors that are with us tonight? We do have an architect, Mr. Don Boss, who. Goose Creek um, Project. Goose Creek and Project, that's correct. Stand so we can recognize you. That's a very difficult project. Very yes. difficult. All right, thank you all for being here. Do we have any questions or discussions with Ms. Uh, for Ms. Myers on the quarterly construction report uh, from Agenda Item 8? Mr. Chairman, I have a quick Mr. question. Mr. McQuillan, go ahead, sir. Thank you for the presentation. I have one question about the Taylor Foster Creek slide. Um, the first bullet point says private owner land contract has some concerns but expect to work through them. Can you elaborate on what those concerns are and how much of a holdup we think that'll be? I'm going to refer that I'll just to say there are concerns possibly with the title. We don't know the time frame at this point and what it would take to work through it. Um, our, our legal team has some possible solutions, but I don't know the time frame on that tonight. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Mr. McCullough? J just one more about mm -hmm. um, the Philip Simmons School. What? What's the? Is there any sort of explanation for what the holdup is on the wetland permitting, or do we do we think that by April we will have it? It usually takes this amount of time. Okay. So um, we're not worried about it yet. All right. Um, we know it's in DHEC hands. They issue the first, and then the Army Corps will turn around and issue theirs afterwards. Okay. So it's where it's supposed to be, but if it gets stuck now or in the future, we might have a problem. But right now, we're in good shape. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, good. Uh, Mr. Obi? Yeah, I, I did have a question about um, the school and our template school. I know on the Tanner Plantation side, it's a little bit difficult, but on the Fox Bank side, are we going to be able to use the same template that we've been able to use for Cane Bay Middle and Nexton Elementary on the Fox Bank side? Um, we believe that the footprint of that school is going to have to be a two-story school to fit on that property. Okay. So, unfortunately, not this time. But we can use the same program that we've been using, a lot of the same guidelines that we use for the other school. So the design may be different, but we can use some of the same systems. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. We, we get the maintenance staff in, and um, okay. we make sure it's done correctly. All right. Mr. Obey, does that conclude your questions? Yes. All right. Do we have any other questions? No. Hearing none, Ms. Myers, you did an outstanding job. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. All right, now moving to agenda item number nine, <laughs> superintendent's report. Tonight, the superintendent has two items for information, a career academy update and teacher forum. Dr. Thompson. Thank you, Dr. Murray and members of the board. I just want to read a statement in regards to our career academies. And as you are aware, we are in year three of a five-year implementation plan of our career academies. This year we have four schools in the pilot and we are very pleased with the progress to date. Our students have overwhelmingly indicated that they benefit from being part of a career academy. Additionally, we are especially grateful for our local business interests in our academies and the opportunities that has, that has created for our students. Going forward, based on feedback from our teachers, students, and parents, the district administration and principals will adjust the five-year plan and return all schools to the 4x4 <coughs> modified block next school year. Career academies will continue in Berkeley County, and we look forward to working with AAIS, principals, and teachers as we make plans for career academies in 2015-2016 using the 4x4 modified block. We realize that we will need to be creative in our scheduling for students and teachers to maintain our small learning communities as principals and teachers plan over the next couple of months. We want to ensure that we grant flexibility to our individual schools, especially in regards to the ninth grade academy scheduling and equip them with the necessary resources for them to continue their success. I'm very grateful for the schools that participated in the pilot and applaud our teachers for their willingness to do whatever it takes to ensure student success. Regardless of the schedule, we are excited about the Career Academy model and its impact on helping our students become college and career ready. So with that, I'd like to bring Teacher Forum uh, Stephanie Wallace um, 
to have a few comments tonight. Ms. Wallace. Welcome, Ms. Wallace. Good to see you again. Thank you. You too. So good evening, Chairman Murray, Dr. Thompson, and members of the board. Um, as always, I'm honored to be here on behalf of Teacher Forum and all of our hardworking teachers. Um, it's hard to believe that it's already February. Uh, this has been an extremely busy and challenging year for us all. Um, I just have to say that I am so proud of my fellow teachers for all of their commitment, collegiality, and perseverance over the past few years as we have rolled out new curriculum, assessments, professional learning communities, and career academies that brought about additional challenges on top of the numerous changes from the state <coughs> level. Um, specifically this evening, I wanted to speak on behalf of our high school teachers. Um, I had the opportunity last week to sit down um, with teacher leaders from most of our high schools who came together on their own time to have a healthy discussion about our current career academy model. Um, the discussions we had mirrored the feedback that you just shared with us, Dr. Thompson, um, that based on this feedback, our group agreed that the majority of teachers were dissatisfied with the AB schedule, but overwhelmingly agreed that students benefit from being a part of a career academy. Um, in addition, the overwhelming majority of our students clearly favored being a part of this um, academy as well. Um, although this transition back to the 4x4 modified block um, schedule alleviates current concerns, it comes with another set of challenges and transitions for our teachers and students. Many teachers are concerned that we haven't seen a clear um, plan for an alternative schedule. Um, in addition, there have been some concerns about finding the time in a 4 by 4 for academy and content PLCs to meet. Um, as feedback from teachers this year overwhelmingly indicates a lack of planning time due to increased responsibilities. Uh, creative scheduling will definitely be key. Um, it is encouraging to hear Dr. Thompson say that teachers will be a part of the planning process. As you all know, we have lo lots of bright and energetic teachers who are here to help and whose experience in the academy model thus far can help navigate the way. With that said, we must keep in mind that we are about to embark on new state standards yet again, which will call for adjustments to our curriculum. We are still facing unknown tests, and now the pilot high schools will be going through yet another schedule change. On top of it all, we are facing a new teacher evaluation system. Again, the changes from the state are causing the conditions for another perfect storm. However, based on Berkeley County's highest graduation and report card ratings to date, it is clear we are successful and we were successful in weathering the storm the first time. So let's maintain what was successful as we implement more change because we clearly have done something right. Like Dr. Thompson said, our teachers will do whatever it takes. We are resilient, flexible, and dedicated. We just ask that as we make yet another transition, we start looking to the future for stability. At this point, we can't look to our state for that, so we are asking that you continue filling that void whenever possible. We also ask that as we move forward, that we continuously assess and allocate the support and resources our teachers and students need to be successful with this model. Please know that Forum will continue to lead support and come together to seek solutions to ensure we help all of our teachers and students experience success while preparing them for college and career. Um, as always, thank you so much for your time and your continued support. Ms. Wallace, uh, I, I believe it's, it's uh, the nine of us who should thank you and the members of the Teacher Forum for keeping us focused on what's most important. And so I'm very glad whenever I look out and see you or Ms. Reeder or whomever may be in that seat for that meeting uh, because you do keep us on the straight and narrow. I do think it is our responsibility in this age of uncertainty with Columbia to provide as much stability to our classroom teachers as we can. And I think you know I've been married to one of your classroom teachers for 25 years, and I hear about it every night. <laughs> so uh, I compliment you on becoming a very powerful voice. And I hope you will understand that I heard every word you had to say, and I look forward to hearing the next words that you say. So thank you very much. I would yield to any of my colleagues if they have any comments for Ms. Wallace or the teacher forum. Any comments? 
must have said something right. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Thank you for being with us. It is now time to move into executive session, agenda item number 10. Do I have a motion and a second to move into executive session? Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Schwabe. Ms. Walford, do second. I have a second? Yes. Ms. Walford? All right, we have a motion from Ms. Schwabe, a second from Ms. Walford to move into executive session. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 The motion carries. We now stand in executive session. We we'll have a motion and a second to return to regular session. So move. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Thank you, Ms. Walford. All those in favor of returning to regular session, please indicate by saying aye. 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 We are in regular session. Moving on to action is required from executive session. Attendance appeal number one. Do we have a motion and a second regarding attendance appeal number one? Mr. Chair, I move that we accept attendance appeal for student number one. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Obi. Thank you, Ms. Lee. A motion has been made by Mr. Obi, seconded by Ms. Lee to accept the attendance appeal of student number one. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. That motion will carry six to one. The attendance appeal of student number one has been uh, accepted. In the matter of expulsion appeal number one, do I have a motion and a second? Mr. Chair, I move that we um, overturn the expulsion for student number one and allow him to attend alternative school do I have a second? second is that you mr. Hayes yes sir I got you a motion has been made by miss Walford seconded by mr. Hayes uh, to assign expulsion student number one to the alternative school all those in favor of the motion please indicate by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed same sign aye that motion carries six to one in the matter of expulsion student number two, do I have a motion and a second? Mr. Chair, in the matter of student uh, expulsion appeal number two, I move that we assign the student to the alternative school. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Mr. McQuillan, was that you, sir? That's yes, correct. sir. All right, thank you. Uh, a motion was made by Mrs. Lee, seconded by Mr. McQuillan to assign expulsion appeal student number two to the alternative school. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries unanimously seven to zero. Uh, our final expulsion appeal of the night is student number three. Do I have a motion and a second regarding expulsion appeal number three? Mr. Chairman, I move that we uphold the expulsion of student number three. I second. A motion has been made by Mr. McQuillan to uphold the expulsion. That motion was seconded by Ms. Schwabe. All those in favor of, of upholding the expulsion of student number three, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, the expulsion for student number three has been upheld. Now we move on to the matter of the Haynesworth motion. Mr. Hayes. I move that the board authorize the superintendent to execute the conflict of interest waiver requested by the Haynesworth Sinclair Boyd law firm and reviewed by the board and executive session in connection with the Hill lawsuit case number 2014-CP-15-137. Do I have a second? second? Thank you, Ms. Walford. Mr. Hayes has made a motion regarding the Haynesworth issue. That motion has been seconded by Mrs. Walford. Um, it would be appropriate if anyone wants the motion to be repeated. Is everyone satisfied? Is everyone ready to call the question? All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Hayes, seconded by Ms. Walford, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Do we have any additional? Madam Secretary, can you note that I was not in executive session when this matter was discussed and I'm recusing myself from this vote. Thank you, Ms. McQuillan, duly noted. Uh, that vote will be 6-0-1. On the BWP motion, Mr. Hayes. Mr. Chairman, I, I, 
move that we give BWP permission to use the draft leadership profile in uh, advertising the position for the new superintendent. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you, Ms. Schwabe. Mr. Hayes has made a motion uh, to accept the leadership profile provided by BWP and Associates. That motion was seconded by Mrs. Schwabe. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries unanimously. Mr. Hayes, if you would communicate that action for us. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, I open up the floor for any additional action as required from executive session. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Mr. McQuillan, please uh, speak uh, slowly so Madam Secretary can record your motion. The first motion I'd like to make is a motion to retain, to retain outside counsel to review itemized criminal legal fees um, with the privileged information being adact, redacted associated with the criminal investigations of the three district employees to determine whether the fees are reasonable and customary under the circumstances for the defense of the employees that we are reimbursing under the statute. Mr. McQuillan, by any chance, do you have that motion written down for Madam Secretary? I do, and I can, uh, I'm, thank happy you, sir. To, I'm happy to read it again and give if it to her. You would read it again and then also provide her with a copy. I sure. want to make sure we have it recorded correctly for the minutes. Yep. Again, for the record, the motion is to retain outside counsel to review the itemized criminal legal fees with the privileged information being redacted associated with the criminal investigations of the three district employees to determine whether the fees are reasonable and customary under the circumstances for the defense of our employees that we are reimbursing under the statute. Okay. Madam Secretary. Uh, would you like a repeat it a third time? If you'll give me a copy, I'll be you, You're okay? It's chicken scratch, but I can. Uh, I'll I'll, I, I, my handwriting is nothing to brag about either, Mr. McQuillan. It's on the tape as well. Thank you. Do we have a second to Mr. McQuillan's motion? Mr. McQuillan, your motion dies without a second. All right. My next. And, and I've, so I apologize, Madam Secretary, for writing all that down. Go ahead, Mr. McQuillan. Motion number two. My next motion is a, um, w w this board received a letter dated January 21st, 2014 from Ms. Kovach's counsel that stated that Ms. Kovach was acting at the direction of the board throughout the time period relevant to the investigation of the 2012 bond referendum. My motion is that the Berkeley County School Board explicitly states that we do not agree with the statements of counsel for Amy Kovach, that Ms. Kovach was acting at the direction of the board with respect to actions for which she has been indicted. Once again, Mr. McQuillan, due to the length of the motion, if you could repeat it for Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary, if you need any additional uh, repeating or, or a repeat of the motion, please indicate it. We'll offer it to you a third time. Go ahead, Mr. McQuillan. Uh, counsel for Jerry Theos, Criminal Defense Counsel for Amy Kovach, wrote the board on January 21st, 2014, and stated that Ms. Kovach was acting, was quote, acting at the direction of the board throughout the time period relevant to the investigation of the 2012 bond referendum, close quotes. I move that the Berkeley County School Board, or the, the motion is that the Berkeley County School Board explicitly states that we do not agree with the statements of counsel for Amy Kovach, that Ms. Kovach was acting at the direction of the board with respect to the actions for which she has been indicted. And I have that written down as well. Yeah, I, I apologize to my colleagues on the board. I am the visual learner. Uh, it's how God made me. Could we please see that motion? Sure. I can't. I can't call for a discussion without fully understanding the motion. Could you? Uh, could we, anyway, we can see that visual. I've got it. I have it typed up in the form of a resolution, or we can do it in the way of a motion. I've got, and I do have copies. Thank you, Mr. McQuillan. Again, that's who I am. Your first one's on here too. First one is not on there. First one's handwritten. You've been a busy man. There we go.
and I do have the letter if anyone wants to see but it. I just wanted to give everyone the opportunity to digest. It's a pretty lengthy uh, motion, resolution. Um, has everyone had the opportunity to digest this information we ju were just presented with? It? Of course, as you know, prior to opening it up for discussion, we must first have a second. May we continue? We're good? All right, uh, a motion has been made by Mr. McQuillan. That motion has been uh, provided to each member of the board in writing. Do we have a second regarding this motion? Second. Ms. Walford seconds the motion. So we have a motion to discuss made by Mr. McQuillan, seconded by Ms. Walford. Do we have any questions or comments regarding this motion? I'll start it off. Very clearly to me, I think it's unnecessary. We just had a lengthy discussion in executive session on a number of matters that I believe covered these topics. Um, I will not be supporting the motion. Any other questions or comments before I call the question? Ms. Lee, the floor is yours, ma'am. May I see the the letter? Sure. Would anyone else like to see the letter? It's important that we all understand the motion. I guess. I guess my question to this is. Is it a question that Mr. McQuillan can ask? Answer, excuse me. No, I suppose it isn't. I'm right. Sorry. That's, that's a difficulty with that motion. And I don't mean to be so slow, folks, but this is an important motion. I want to make sure we give it its, 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 its uh, opportunity to be heard and considered. Mr. Hayes, are you comfortable with the motion? Are you ready to? vote sir okay all right is everybody ready I uh, serve at your pleasure all right a motion has been made by mr. McQuillan seconded by mrs. Walford uh, it's a motion that I will read for the record uh, he does have it entitled Berkeley County School Board resolution whereas on February 11th 2014 Amy Kovach was indicted by a Berkeley County Grand Jury for violations to South Carolina Code 813-1346, a criminal ethics statute relating to the use of public funds, property, or time to influence the outcome of an election. Whereas on September 9, 2014, Amy Kovach was indicted by another Berkeley County Grand Jury for violations of South Carolina Code 16-13-10A and B-2, a statute making it unlawful for a person to commit forgery. Whereas Jerry Theos, criminal defense counsel for Amy Kovach, wrote this board on January 21st, 2014 and stated that Ms. Kovach was acting at the direction of the board throughout the time period relevant to the investigation of the 2012 bond referendum. Now, therefore, the Berkeley County School Board explicitly states that we do not agree with the statements of counsel for Amy Kovach, that Ms. Kovach was acting at the direction of the board with respect to the actions for which she has been indicted. Motion made by McQuillan, seconded by Walford. I'm going to do a roll call vote for this resolution. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your right hand and stating aye. 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 Mr. McQuillan and Ms. Walford are voting in support of the motion, Madam Secretary. All those uh, who are not in favor of this motion, please indicate by raising your right hand and stating aye. Aye. Hayes, Lee, Schwabe, Murray. Mr. Obi, I didn't get your vote, sir. Are you abstaining? Yes, sir. I'd like uh, more time to review the document. I, I certainly understand that, sir. So the uh, motion, Mr. McQuillan, will fail. Two, four, one. Mr. McQuillan, do we have any more motions? 
Based on the outcome of that motion, I, I do not have any further motions. Thank you, Mr. McQuillan. Do we have any other action as required from executive session? As always, thank you all for being here, uh, your wonderful colleagues. Do we have a motion and a second to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Ms. Schwabe? Second. second. Mr. Hayes, all those in favor of adjourning, please indicate by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned.